Okay, 8B, 1526, and there's an amendment. Yes. 8B, 1526. If the committee would indulge me for a minute, the only difference between this amendment and other amendments and the actual bill is that it drops it down to one half ounce that we're talking about here. And it also raises the age to 21 at which you can be compelled to attend a drug awareness program to address my friend, uh, Lincoln, concerns. Under 18, you still have your parents notified. We kept that in there. Do you make a motion on your amendment? I would. I would make a motion to accept this amendment. Uh, yes. Yeah. Does it replace the whole bill? Yes, it would replace the whole bill. And uh, it maintains the first offense is a $250 fine violation. Second violation would be a $500 fine for the marijuana. And the third violation would remain in class A misdemeanor as it is right now in law. First offense. Second. Second. Have the, uh, the original. As introduced, I have a red dot. No, the red, red dot. dot. Yes, I do. I, he has to have it. I, Representative, I've had many calls uh, to vote against this bill. For some reason, I don't know why, but I guess they call me out on my answering. They said they're not in favor of this piece of legislation whatsoever. And I just wanted to point that out. Okay. So I'm just going to have to uh, vote against this piece of legislation. Thank you. 593 It sends a bad message. Is there any other discussion? Comments? Representative Shredder. Just briefly, yeah. I'm going to support the amendment, but I will be voting against the bill as amended. In the past, I've always voted for decriminalization of marijuana, but even reducing it to half an ounce, that's 10 joints. I think that's just too much. So, but I do think the amendment makes the bill better, but I will, can't support it as amended. That's what I mean, right? An ounce is 20 joints. No, an ounce is 40. Is it? Well, the information I can Last year, two years. That's just ten. Well, we get the information from half <laughs> right. This was rolling. There's a lot of discretion. Well, we get the information for it. Well, we get the information for it. That's how they have To speak to the wrong message, uh, I believe Maine's had decriminalization since uh, '76. Uh, Medical <coughs> 1999, and that they have lower teen ratings than we do. So how can it send the wrong message when they're using it less and they are not getting jail time? It's usually half the time they're taking it and stopping the rest. Yes. Well, I represent like this. Um, thank you, ma'am. We have a lot of stories coming here, and you have a lot of stories given to you that young people are made criminals over smoking marijuana. That's not true. At least 82% of the kids that are caught doing marijuana go to a diversion program. And the other thing that we get, and they don't get a record of it, is when they continue and continue and continue and get themselves in serious trouble. The other part of it is the federal government has not done anything about the laws of transportation and things like that. We will decriminalize this and put a fine on it, but they can still get into trouble for having it in their cars. <coughs> so we're really sending a mixed message out there. Right. Transportation would only be across state lines, though, federal. No. No, transportation no. is in the car. <laughs> Having it in their vehicle. I'm pretty sure they can charge for that under the state. They don't have to charge under federal law. Well, the vote state, if we don't change that law, then what happens? You've got to charge for them transporting. <laughs> okay. Can you touch one piece? I, 12 others go that way. <laughs> I voted for this two years ago. 
but I can't do it again. Again, you know, people, I, I don't hear anybody out there in the public saying, hey, we're in favor of this type of legislation at this time. They're sending the wrong message again. We keep saying that. And why do we want to go against federal laws also? I mean, you know. How are we sending the wrong I message? Just, I, I just don't understand it. I mean, I was on the school board, and I can't remember the different programs we had to pass and this and that. Young people do get involved out here. We get to control it. They're young. They get to learn the process. Well, I agree we, with that. I agree with the statement was just stated a few minutes ago uh, about the wrong message. It is the wrong message we're sending to our young people in this state. We sell liquor in this state. I, liquor is not the issue right now, uh, Representative. The issue right now is marijuana. You can't talk about this, that, a lot of things are probably not good, but they're already there. So we got to improve, so we don't keep adding on all the time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to remind the committee that uh, not too long ago, the state of Massachusetts passed this exact same legislation uh, yeah. to include up to an ounce. They've had no problems. They've had no issues with their state police or local municipalities. It's actually reduced the amount spent on wasting time on this issue, so I would support it. One more remark, and then I'll, I'll just leave it at that. If you made a motion to accept the amendment, if you really believe that possession of marijuana should be punishable by a year in jail, then vote no. If you really believe two possession charges of, of possession of marijuana deserve a year in jail, vote no. But if you believe that children are salvageable, regardless of how many possession charges that you have, vote yes. Vote to pass the bill, put it in front of the House, and see what happens. <clears throat> then, all right. The motion is uh, to pass on the amendment. If you're in favor of the amendment, say aye. If you're opposed, say no. I this one roll. safer than the other, and the state happens to sell the more dangerous one. That's the only difference. Representative. I guess the only thing that I can say about this is I'm not going to vote for it, because I think what happens is we keep adding different things. <clears throat> There's other drugs out there that people are doing. And when you keep mixing another drug, another 
thing that makes you high, I think you're just asking for trouble with the person that makes them even worse than what they were. And I, that's why I can't support, unless it's prescribed by a doctor, I'm not going to book anything I want to Unless a doctor says, you need that. And that's where I come from. No offense to the other side. Uh, could I ask uh, Phil and, and Kyle, uh, do you have any information on uh, usage rates, changes in usage rates in Maine and Massachusetts? Uh, I do. Uh, they're, they're lower now, teen use rate in, in Maine than in, in New Hampshire. And New Hampshire has a much, much stricter penalty. I'd also like to point out, Representative Pittsburgh, that in other countries that have gone with the decriminalization model, all their youth rates of use come down. Just a, proven, just a proven fact. Maybe it's just not, not cool anymore. It loses that criminal flair. Who knows? Who, who, who can see into the eyes of children? But it's, it, it goes down. Thank you, Thank you, Chair. I'd also like to point out the, the Schaefer Commission report, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, uh, back in 1972, uh, Richard Nixon <coughs> basically created the war on drugs um, and commissioned a study to be done on this very issue. And the recommendations that came back were not favorable to President Nixon. They were favorable to the fact that creating prohibition is more harmful to society than the actual drug use itself. Um, and I have copies for the committee if they'd like to have them. I'd actually like to submit it to the file. So um, going on the recommendations of the government study and all the other data involved with this, I, I don't, and the states around us, all the states around us recognize that this is, that this is an issue. We're criminalizing our kids. They're no longer allowed to get uh, student loans, but a murderer can get a student loan. That seems blatantly ridiculous to me, patently ridiculous, I, I should say. Uh, I just, I don't see that our, our law, our law enforcement officers need to be wasting their time on this when they can be fighting serious crimes. Our courts are overburdened, our prison systems are overburdened. There's no reason to, to, to waste the money and resources on this when we can actually be using it towards better purposes. Representative Ruby? Yes, uh, I, I don't like this. Uh, and now it's the same, uh, well, because Massachusetts got this, uh, the other state has this. Yeah, Massachusetts got a state income tax, they get a sales tax, and we don't. We have a lot of people move into the state of New Hampshire because they want to change it. Yeah, I think people should move into New Hampshire because they like it. And one other thing is that there's no justification to be passed in this type of bill in this state at this time. None whatsoever. The only thing that I have heard from the people out there is that they're not in favor of passing this legislation. They said they're not in favor of it. And I know where you people are. Is it a group? All of a sudden, I've been sitting here for quite a few years, all of a sudden there's a big push in the state of New Hampshire. I'm hearing from my constituents, marijuana, marijuana. Why? All of a sudden it's becoming such a big issue in the state. There's something wrong here. Because we've been, I've been sitting here for a long time. And I'm going to tell you, this is the first year I see this big push for marijuana. I don't know why. I don't hear it from the public. I'm hearing it here. Thank you, Dr. Chair. Dr. Yes, um, Chair, I'm You made the statement that there our police have something else to do besides arrest kids for marijuana. Well, there's a violation on this. How are they going to get them if they don't arrest them? So that, number one, they're still going to be arrested, no matter what. Number two, the results that you hear out of Maine or Mass are results that somebody gives that, that are in favor of this. And because I have heard that Maine has a big problem with it, and I heard that Mass had a big problem with that. So, I mean, you know, it, it just, and before we do anything, you need to get to the federal level and take care of the federal laws, and then start to bring money. Right. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> two items. Number one, I'm not in favor of this. I, uh, you may not believe this, but I, if you dump this stuff in front of me, I couldn't tell you what it is. I've never seen it, I've never participated in it, okay? Um, I've seen the results of it many times. Because of that, no, I'm not in favor. 
As far as the police uh, enforcing these laws, last Friday night I sat in the bar and I had a gentleman offer me a joint. And when I called the cop, they had the son of a bitch arrested. The cop wouldn't even come because he said it's not, not enough for him to worry about. And number two, line eight, the second page, five grams of hashish. What is that? Like concentrated active ingredient of the marijuana. That's still a class A misdemeanor. There's no violation. That's in current law. Yeah, but I mean, you 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 upped because it now says in the case of. So we've got something else going on here besides just the marijuana. Marijuana, black tap, black tap. What's the drug? I have no idea. I couldn't tell. What's the drug? I have no idea. I don't think we need to be fighting the drug war here, to, or, or ending the drug war to pass this legislation. Let's take a look at the amendment we just passed. Right now, it's a year in jail, up to a year in jail, and up to a $1,000 fine, if you are arrested for possession of marijuana, simple possession. Now, if they're only charging, if they need that to be higher so they can get these people into the uh, diversion program, then why don't we just legislate the diversion program as we did right here? It's a drug awareness program. At the end of that, if they do it again, they're going to get another crack at it. If they do it again, they're going to prison. That's what it says in the law. So why why would we charge them with prison the first time if we have no intention of sending them to prison? Let's put a violation on the record rather than a misdemeanor because the misdemeanor disqualifies you from all sorts of things that you wouldn't realize. Would you believe that we don't have any drug treatment centers in the state? That we've done away with all the state-run drug treatment places? This is a drug awareness program. Drug awareness, what is that? You still have to pay for it and have people teach it to you. Do people pay for it themselves? Representative Welch. Yeah, the reason I'm going to support this is because of what I witnessed at a, at a checkpoint, as a matter of fact. Where a fellow came through was not part of the sample, but he was pulled over because it was 2.30 in the morning and he didn't have any headlights on. He was smoking a, a joint. They brought him over to the side, talked with him, got permission to search his vehicle. He only had the one joint. And about 20 minutes later, they dropped it down the storm drain and sent him on his way. Selective enforcement. That's what's wrong with the current situation. If, if it's bad, then arrest them all. If it's not bad, then let's do this. And, and that's basically the way I've felt ever since I've seen it. So, the uh, federal blacks is only for DWI. He wasn't, he wasn't part of the sample. <laughs> the, the thing is, we've got to remember is that marijuana now is got much stronger than what it was when I was remember in the Navy uh, they had a problem with marijuana, but it's getting so st much stronger. And they make it sound and now it's not if you were watching the television show just a few days ago, the experts in the field were saying that half of the time they don't even know what's going in there. Now I would want my grandchildren to be smoking marijuana that's bought off under uh, illegally and then smoke that so I don't want them to touch it at all, whatsoever. So this idea of saying, oh yeah, you're going to decriminalize, we're going to sell it, this, that. Every country in the world that's brought in drugs and approved them has gone down. Can, you, uh, uh, can we down stay in the, the bar? Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving the opportunity. I, I guess I'd like to point to uh, Article 18, Part 1 on the wall there. All Penalties ought to be proportional to the nature and offense of, of, to nature of the, of the offense. Think about this. There's somebody sitting here in the middle of the room, minding their own business, smoking a joint. What's the crime? What or, did they do? Or even possessing they did, it. They, did, they did something that we as society say is horrible, just as we did with alcohol. Look how that turned out. This is this is basically in that same vein, and I think it's a waste of police resources to waste their time on it, as uh, representative. Price and, and, and Welch, they have they have differing views on, on the situation, but uh, 
like, 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 they, like they said, it's selective enforcement. If the police recognize that this is not uh, a good use of their time, we should have the offense. People proportional to the nature of the crime and law enforcement is starting to recognize it's a waste of their time, so should we. Are there any other comments? Oh, Representative Sharon. Here comes the surprise. Okay. Yeah. You've got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Then we can get him some for his eyes. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole other issue. Yeah. I lived one out all my life. One of the things that I have to go back in time in my jail days when I saw an awful lot of kids, I say kids, that were brought in from UNH who were going to the Speedway, which is right in Epping, and to see them come in and get them uh, arrested and so forth and suffer the consequence of being charged, which was going to affect them in later life. And I used to look at that and think, yeah, that's right, they broke the law and so forth. And you know, there's something about age that you begin to mellow a little bit without the use of pot. <laughs> and as I began to look at all of this, I had thought, you know what, this is as bad as they pretended to be. We do have issues. Representative Panlock has brought it up. Federal law versus local law. I'll give you a quick example, and I think, uh, Representative, I had given you a story, which is not a story, it's a true story. Three kids were arrested on Route 101 in the days where there was only two lanes. One of them, in his smartness, decided to stick his head out the window and blow marijuana smoke at a state trooper who was parked on the side of the road. So what does the trooper do? He takes off, stops the vehicle. The driver gets charged with transportation. Passenger in the front seat gets charged in those days with knowingly present. Did you remember that? I told you. And then the kid in the background had a uh, had the joint, so he was in possession. They bring him to the jail, and while they're doing a pat search, they find a seed in one of the kids' pocket, and he got charged. A seed. It's like a mustard seed. He got charged with manufacturing. <laughs> God's honest truth. So it shows you where we came from. Things have gotten a little bit better. But my concern, certainly, there is a contradiction of law that I worry about. Uh, the amount that originally was in here, I certainly didn't agree with. In fact, the first committee I served on with uh, Representative Welch my first year was uh, marijuana. It was a representative by the name of Weed. And I thought it was a joke. <laughs> So it's been around a long time, obviously. And I'm just saying that there are issues that, you know, I think we've gone beyond the point. I think we've really got a serious look at this in a different vein as we have in the past. That's Representative Tasker. We're not going to sell it. We're not telling you it's okay to possess it. We're not telling you it's okay to use it, smoke it, drive around with it. It's still illegal. Just lowering the penalty slightly to fit the nature of the offense and to hopefully keep a lot of kids on the right track instead of putting them into the into the ditch as we speak. That's what happens. It's hard to get out of that. Okay. Any more discussion? All right. If you're in favor of the bill as amended, HB 1526, say aye. If you're opposed, you'll say nay. The clerk, please call the roll. Okay, Jaye. Aye. Welch. Aye. Fields. No. Fesh. No. Sharon. Aye. Dunlap. Aye. Antos. Aye. Riazzo. Aye. Price. No. Parsons. No. Tasker. Aye. Penalakis. No. Ruby. No. Shirtlet. No. Ginsburg. Aye. Swinford. Aye. <coughs> nine seven. Nine seven. Nine seven. Nine seven. This will go on regular calendar. Okay. Is it nine to seven? Yeah. Nine, nine seven. seven. And uh, Representative Taskin. Yep. Yeah. People kids. Okay. Let's be good for it, Mike. May I submit the... Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
going to figure out so you should just help me write that blur. Right, he's going to be the second speaker if needed. Huh? I can see the headlines. Huh? We have to legislate to legalize no. marijuana and guns together. No, it's an excellent company. Uh, yes. Yeah, we had some bills on board last year. Members of the youngest members of the bill. Really? Sponsor the bill. Hey, 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 what I will start with the amended rule. Water been announced. With the house of Florida getting killed. I'll be here. I'll be more. I'll be here. Okay, I'll be here. 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 I'll be Okay then, moving along. HB 1527, exempting cultivation of marijuana from manufacturing under the Controlled Drug Act. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I'm sure you should smoke that stuff when you're in the Navy. Is it 
<laughs> Representative Casper brings up some, some valid points. However, there are those that aren't uh, on the up and up that would be more than happy to grow. And uh, unless we pass House Bill 1705, which was to tax and regulate it, anybody could manufacture whatever you, whatever you want. And I think that's a problem. Um, I do believe that we need to spend uh, our resources in other places in regards to a lot of the issues that surround us, but uh, this, this is not one of them. I think that uh, preventing gang activity or any of, any, any of that nature um, that would probably result from being able to escape uh, criminal penalty for growing 100 plants, which is quite a few. Uh, unless we had 1705 in place so that reputable business owners were paying taxes at the state and that it was regulated so that it was taken out of the hands of the criminals, I think that's, that's the proper way to go. So I'll be voting against this. Okay. Representative Baruki, then Representative Ginsburg. Uh, my understanding is that if we do even tax the possibility of charging such a person with possession, which would allow for charge of a year in jail, is that right? It would, but do we really want to have the, here we go with the proportion of the nature of the offense. If you're growing 100 marijuana plants to make money for your gang or whatever you're doing, that that troubles me. If you're a person growing a plant in your yard next to a tomato, that's fine. I don't see a problem with that, but that's not what this bill does. This bill opens it up to anybody who wants to grow fields of it, and that's not what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm looking at my support is behind 1705. We tax and regulate it. The respectable people will be in their hands. The state will be in control of it. There'll be taxes paid on it. It won't wind up in the hands of the criminals who would make the money. Those are the people that we don't want to have making money. Yes. Representative Ruby. You think this. Again, we're looking at why is it there is so many marijuana bills this year which have been brought up by people I represent Say, what's going on? I said, I don't know. I, I, I talked to them on the phone. They said, well, we'll tell you. Number one, they want to try to decriminalize marijuana. Number two, after they do that, they want to get in business of selling it. And then they said they're controlling it. it. If we can't see that, we've got a problem. I mean, it's one bill after another with marijuana. I've never seen so many marijuana bills. It's trying to be imposed onto the public. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are there any other questions, mm -hmm. comments? Okay. We'll get to it. You guys are all going to jail a bit. <laughs> you think I'm shit? It's ridiculous. Uh, How many more marijuana bills do you have? Yeah. Stand by. Yeah. No. I, I think we should be concentrating on jobs. Uh, like that. Oh, that's oh yeah, you can create the, jobs. Uh, drug death data from the state of New Hampshire actually tells people where this creates jobs. What happened with jobs? Jobs. Okay, if you're in favor of. Uh, uh, oh, well, that stuff must be good. I come on boring. I don't believe this thing. Because they don't have enough money to get all of them. You don't see that surprise. So what are you doing? Do you your motion? No. Give me two. Okay. Okay, I'm still looking for a motion. Is that a motion, Laura? I'm not making any motion. That's it. Second. Second. I thought Tasca made it. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, really? Okay, he had the other one. You know what? I think I'll. 
Did he get second? No. Uh, Larry second. Well, I'll come up again next year. You guys won't be out until you get all the money. Larry, you'll you be complaining about it. That's all you want. Larry Jane. Yes, he did. And, Don't be um, waving your fingers when you're like that. This is the second. That'd be good. All right, let's try it this way. Keep the job. You're in favor of ITL. Yeah, you support us. Say aye. If you're opposed, say nay. And when the clerk is ready, he'll call the roll. Aye. Aye. Roach. Aye. Fields. Aye. Fish. Aye. Sharon, aye. 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 Antos. Aye. Piazzo. Aye. Price. Aye. Parsons. Aye. Tasker. Aye. Malakwas. Aye. Berube. Aye, aye. Scherler. Aye. Ginsburg. Aye. Winsburg. Aye. Fifteen. Yeah. Fifteen. 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 Fifteen.
the asparagus would be the industrial hemp, and the broccoli would be the marijuana. I have some pictures of what you would like? like to see those as well. Well, you can't go past yeah. yes, those around that way. Oh, that would be a field of marijuana, that would be a field of hemp. I'm pretty sure you'd be able to tell the difference representing the panel office. I don't think I would care to tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I care if it is that they, in, uh, they, built, they put it in between the plants. It's impossible to put it in between. It kills the, it kills the potent marijuana by making it in uh, If I, if I should continue. Really carry all that? In, in, in 1942, because because of the government's actions in 1938, we did not have enough uh, rigging for our sailors that went to uh, to war in World War II. So the government begged farmers to grow industrial hemp again. And they even had a program called Hemp for Victory, where they begged the farmers to grow it. Uh, President George Bush, when he bailed out of his plane in World War II, his life was saved because the rigging on his parachute was made of hemp. And I can go on and on and on. I mean, if you if you translate the name of the state that we live in, New Hampshire, New Hemp County, you were named after the county in England that Whoa. actually made the hemp for the ships. So um, there's plenty of information that goes along with this. And this bill doesn't do anything unless some of the other New England states agree to go along with us to ask the federal government to allow our farmers to grow it. Okay. When we talk about the fuel situation that we have today, we have uh, almost five dollars a gallon for gasoline. Uh, hemp is a great source of biofuel. It's something that uh, that I had gotten into, I'd say, I think it was the year 2000, I brought a vehicle. It was, it was one of the first vehicles that was converted to biodiesel. And if we had uh, a facility here in the state of New Hampshire where we crushed and, and processed hemp seed oil, pressed it for the oil, all the trucks that were going up and down the road could be running on biofuel that we grew here. So this is, this is also a job creating Entity for those that farmers that wish to become involved with it. All you have to do is vote, Madam Chair. The uh, last time we had this bill, somebody passed around. I don't know, David, you saw get some of that they gave us for our hands and all that. You could use it because. Of, I recall that. No, yes, I, that would I, be. I, they gave me a tube of it. Nice. That would be soup. the hemp butter sold at, uh, <laughs> so, at the body shop. But the thing is, in the Navy now, and in the armed forces, they don't use uh, lines with hemp. They use nylon now. And they Just stretch. They want to use But your parachute cords are all nylon when you jump. I guess old uh, President Bush, when he bailed out, it goes back a few years. Last week, while we were in our long session, there was this newspaper that is in the ante room. I happen to be from reading. Farm Bureau. Yep. It's from the Farm Bureau. And the last page, hemp farming in California closer to reality, a bill moves through the legislature. There are several states Steve. that have decided that we need to get back to an agricultural base in, in areas that need so that, uh, that help. And New Hampshire being an agricultural state, it used to be anyway, I think that we should, we should reconsider that. So if anybody would like any of this information, <coughs> Still buy hemp protein and the health. And by the way, my, my, my shirt is made of hemp. Can't even tell the difference. Okay, Representative Ben Watkins. Yes, I was under the impression that we didn't have any place to any infrastructure to uh, process this hemp. There's nothing to process. Why would that be? We, we could ship it to Canada. And they say they don't have it in Canada. And then pay more. That's what they came in and told us. Uh, All the hemp in Canada has been processed. If I recall correctly, they have it there. The problem is they can't export it because we won't take it. Correct. Right. And the young lady that talked about growing this said that on a small scale, the individual grower would do their own processing. We do not have any major yeah. people to process. What a great manufacturing business. Well, again, you know, uh, as we talk, small businesses, the, the, the farmers, uh, the agricultural crops that people could actually maybe come up with some type of sus subsistence living on this. <coughs> they might be able to come up with a whole new uh, bit of income. There was this young lady. There was this young lady who testified. Uh, she's a UH senior. Uh, Jen Hall. Uh, she says that the illegal marijuana, that is illegal, does not grow. If mixed in with the hemp, because the marijuana would not could not cross pollinate and uh, yes, yeah, the marijuana 
people like to smoke has no seeds in it. So if you stick it in a, in a field, unfended, with all the other marijuana plants, it's going to be seeded with inferior quality marijuana. Now you have a bunch of seeds that are no good, plus a bunch of pot plants that you don't want to smoke, as opposed to pristine sensimia, which is where the term came from, seedless sensimia. Phil, do you have any idea why they stopped it in the state? Uh, they stopped it in the United States because in 1937 they passed the Marijuana Tax Act, which the federal government has made it illegal to grow, um, largely because alcohol prohibition had ended and the Federal Bureau of Narcotics at the time had turned, now had become um, alcohol, not alcohol, tobacco, oh, they, be, they became the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration, and that was what they started with. They started with marijuana because it was actually an immigration issue. We had lots of immigrants from Mexico that were coming out. Why did they stop counting in this state? They all swamped them together. Well, well that's, that was the problem. They were trying to outlaw marijuana. And since it was all one, they considered one plant, even though it's not by the pictures that I showed you. There are two separate plants. There's, there's cannabis sativa, which is the industrial hemp, and cannabis indica, which is the marijuana, basically, um, for lack of a better term. Um, since it was all in one, the federal government just decided to leave it that way, and the industry didn't have a problem with it because at that time they were creating nylon and all the other riggings for ships that they didn't want to compete with, something that they couldn't patent. All the petroleum-based materials that were made for af after that pretty much kept pushing us further and further back. Could I ask Representative Price, you said that uh, they have it in Canada but the reason that it's warehoused is because they can't export it to any place? They, they can export it to Europe, but Europe is growing their own. And the stuff that the young lady testified to that comes into the States is coming from Europe. So we have to go around the world to that. It seems to me I remember the story that when the prohibition ended, the uh, people who were back in the booze business were upset because the booze wasn't taken off the way they anticipated. And what they did is they heavily lobbied the Congress to make marijuana illegal because people were still smoking marijuana. And so what they wanted to do is change what people were doing, and they did. So they made it illegal, and as you know today, we're drinking a lot of booze. They also made a crazy they movie have called they, uh, they roll the hemp in with the marijuana, is that what you're saying? Moving? No. Yeah, 1939. Three yeah. And every time there's bills like this to come up before the federal government, that's shown on almost every station for two or three days. It's shown on HBO and stuff, it's good. It's camping now. Yeah. All right, moving on. <coughs> um, if you're in favor of... ITL. No, I depend. Yeah. 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 It, it really upsets me when people say, you know what? The founding fathers wouldn't have done this. The founding fathers wouldn't have done that. George Washington he made rye whiskey. The man likes his whiskey. My grandmother right. made it in the bathtub. <laughs> they grew hemp. Gin. Chances are they probably smoked hemp. We don't know. Nobody's around to ask them. We don't know. They, they had it there. If, if they're telling us that you can smoke hemp, well, maybe they did. Maybe they tried it and said, this isn't very good. But it's you know it's been around for a long time. It's not like this is breaking onto the scene. This isn't going to let the genie out of the bottle. It's just industrial hemp. Oh my. <laughs> okay, if you're in favor of to pass, say aye. If you're opposed, say nay. Who made, I I need just one. Who made the uh, motion? I made the motion. Gaz and Sam. No, Gaz made the motion. Gaz made the motion. Okay. No, Gaz did. <laughs> What bothered me, and, and I don't understand why the federal government hasn't done for something about it, if it does so much for the soil, for the farmers, why haven't they? It's easy to leave them alone in prohibition. Plus, DuPont doesn't want you to take away their nylon, because you can replace it with this, you can replace it with that. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to give up their piece of pie. Really, here vote okay, will the man. clerk please call the roll? That's a the vote is ought to pass. That's a cute little animal. You came with me. Ought to pass. Aye. Roach. Aye. Fields. Aye. Fish. Aye. Chairman. Aye. Dilna. Aye. Antos. Yes. Aye. Bryce. Aye. Parsons. Aye. Tasker. Aye. Penlacus. Aye. 
Or Ruby. Come on. Shirtlip. Aye. Ginsburg. Aye. Swinford. Aye. Okay, HB seventeen oh five FNA. Seventeen oh five FNA. Allowing purchase and use of marijuana by adults. Regulating the purchase and use of marijuana and imposing taxes on the wholesale and retail sale of marijuana. Oh. <laughs> that motion has gone across to the right hand side of the committee, I'm sure. Yes. Is there an amendment with yes. that? I will. So you don't want to say yeah. I'd like to move. I'll second that. Chief. Was there any amendments with this one, I hope? No, no, I don't have. Uh, it says FNA. It says FNA. I'd be happy to speak to the motion. Let me grab the call. Give him a chance. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Administration. What is the A stand for, David? Administration? In that word. Uh, well, we Thank you. But if it's an A, I'm sorry, if I may again. If it goes to bill and the slash A, yep, then it has an amendment so where it goes FN and then dash A. Thank you very much. Your favorite. This one is printed on tip paper. This, this one, the one pilot's handed out is printed on tip paper. So it lasts a lifetime. Can you turn it into rope when we're done? So would you like to talk to you, Bill? I would love to, thank you. And I thought I would never vote for a new tax, but this is maybe the one exception where I'm, it's not such a bad thing. As a fiscal conservative, I never want to increase the tax, but I think this would actually save the state and the taxpayers a ton of money by uh, no longer incarcerating and criminalizing a victimless so-called crime, a victimless act where people smoke marijuana or cannabis. Um, it could have potentially be a great uh, income or revenue source for the state. Again, I'm not a big fan of that, but for some of the programs we talk about here all the time, maybe that could help uh, support some of the, <coughs> the alternative sensing programs and mental health programs that uh, we hear a lot about. In fact, it is, it's a long bill, it's hard to understand, but we will uh, also treat this, if people consider marijuana or cannabis use a, uh, a dangerous thing or a habitual thing, then some of those funds can be used and treat this as a health problem or a mental health problem, not just a crime or a criminal problem. So for those reasons, I think this is uh, some excellent legislation. I think we should take a bold step as a legislature this year in the House and show that we treat people fairly and want to give them personal choice, let them do things as long as they're not harming others. And if uh, you can suck some money out of them in a, uh, a not so harmful way, let's give it a try. So I move on to pass. Yeah. This, this includes yeah. one ounce of marijuana. We just passed the bill. But this is to, to legalize. That was to criminalize. Well, how is it controlling any premises of the vehicle? We're up to one ounce of marijuana. We should arrest That's fine. I mean, we can pass them both out of the house, yeah. and they can we'll, uh, kill the half ounce down later on. Yeah, I have to get this one. In fact, I'll ask the speaker to bring this one up first <laughs> before the other one. Okay. Yes, I just have a question for Representative Warden. If you say that 
uh, it doesn't harm anybody else. What about people on the street walking around smelling that? As soon as we were elected, I had a very interesting experience. I'd like to relate that to you. Okay. We're walking down the street from the house towards Tandy's, towards the clock tower. There's about 50 reps, nice big group of reps. Individual walking the other way. He's smoking a cigarette. Everybody thinks he's smoking a cigarette. He's smoking a marijuana cigarette. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Of all these worldly people, <coughs> people have seen a lot, been there, done that. No clue. This individual is not bothering anybody. Kept walking. I guess that's all I have to say about that. But you can smell it a little bit. I hate tobacco smoke. So do I. So let's say anywhere you can't smoke tobacco, you can't smoke marijuana. There are quite a few perfumes and fragrances that I don't like either, but we deal with them. Don't take that moment. Would you believe that uh, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I was at the park in Bourbon, too. Many times I've become an individual at home, walking through the, I know what it smells like. Me okay, too. Because when I was in the police academy, it's I'm never in contact uh, when I get to the will sure. say they had a walk there and they burned some, so we could mm -hmm. come in there. And I could tell the ones you might have sampled before because they were right up close and personal <laughs> with, with the smoke. And I was like, you guys pay for this stuff? But I know what it smells like, so it's been more than one incident mm -hmm. the last term. But uh, anyway, I don't think this is going to get out. Um, if this passes the committee, I don't think it's going to pass the House. However, I will vote for it because, as you understand, I've done some little bit of research, and it's time, in my opinion, to regulate marijuana the way you regulate tobacco, the way you regulate alcohol, and, just, and tax the heck out of it. Phil Garazzo would be very angry if I didn't bring this up. Uh, we want to talk about keeping children off drugs, right? Children being able to go down to their buddy's house 21-year-old guy selling marijuana, no problem. Not going to not going to be an issue. Now let's let's look at the marijuana in this framework. Now it's a thousand dollar fine and up to a year in jail if someone 21 and older provides marijuana to someone under 21. There's not going to be a lot of people who want to take that chance. Granted, now you'll get a couple people who buy a six pack for somebody. It happens. Buy a pack of cigarettes for somebody 17 years old. It happens. That's not going to stop. This will establish a penalty for it. Say, if you're over 21, what you do is your own business. Keep the kids out of it. Don't give it to children. If you do, there's going to be a penalty. That's a clear-cut line. And checking ID is going to be the quickest way to stop marijuana to get, getting it in the hands of children than to just let unscrupulous peddlers. They just had that big post up in um, the Crystal? Enfield. Huh? Enfield. Enfield. They had the... No, 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 this is the one in Bristol, I'm sure. Oh. They broke into an apartment, the, car, the task force went in, they found scales and money. Oh, by the way, it was subsidized housing. And um, the taxes of work. <laughs> the, the gentleman that was living with the woman who <coughs> has the subsidized housing was selling to um, the middle school. Yep. Oh, okay. Unscrupulous. And that's what you'll get when you get an unregulated <coughs> You There's a provision in here to take the license away from someone who allows someone under 21 on their premises. If you sell marijuana, you allow someone under 21 on your premises, check their ID at the door, or you're out. You can lose your license. That's the same thing with selling fireworks. That's right. You can only sell them to somebody who's 21 years or older. All right, so at the door, yeah. if you're not 21, get out. Well, well then we've already, already made, made the, the young people. Well, the only good thing is we already have that kind of structure on the books. It's not so the high level. Well, well implement it further if, down the road. if anybody here has ever traveled to Boston in the morning, during the morning rush, uh, agreed. if they look in that rearview mirror going over that bridge, and they can see all kinds of little glows in the <laughs> because I'm sure yeah. that they're not smoking cigarettes. Not the morning It's yes. not the morning it's fog. It's not the morning fog. I wasn't going to say that. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to vote against this, and I'll tell you why. Page, page 9, line 14 and 15. This gives rulemaking ability to the Commissioner of the Department of Revenue Administration, and I am completely opposed 
to giving rulemaking to any department. Is that an amendment I see in the works? Oh, you don't lower amendment. Too late for amendment. amendment. You know, if, if that wasn't there, I might consider it, Tom, but there's no way I'm going to give rulemaking ability away. They just do too many things which sneak stuff in and, and uh, I'm opposed to that 100%. Is that how uh, alcohol retailers are handled? I don't care. I'm not going forward. That was before me. From here forward, I'm not. I'm just opposed to that. The H9, what line is it? I mean, we can get that separate out of there. Hello? Nice speech. Yes, you may, Representative Shannon. Okay. If we went under the pretense... Oh, Representative Ruby, I'm sorry. Yeah, if we went under the pretense, uh, the whole bunch of people are breaking the law, and we should uh, legalize something, I think we've got a problem with our chest. Also, I believe that, uh, you know, when you're going against all the federal statutes all the time, uh, we are breaking the law. And uh, that is also sending a message to my young people, you know. It is controlled by the federal law. It is not only controlled by the state. So what we are doing is saying that they can commit a crime. And that's what we're doing this piece of legislation. And I may speak a little bit more because I think this, this is really out of hand. Thank you, my I'd like to speak on that, Roger. I would like to hear you speak on I, I think you probably do a great job. I would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. I would. I probably would. Go ahead. Sharon, go ahead. Well, I, in this environment, the thing that bothers me the most, and I probably shouldn't because this would go to fiscal, beyond this point. But I also remember not too long ago when somebody had mentioned about sales taxes. <coughs> sales taxes. The response from DRA said, there's no way in hell that we could do sales tax. It would take years to bring our software up to par in order to do this. So I'm envisioning a major issue here if this, if this were to go through, just setting up the program. But we were told, take handle your own business and your own committee, let fiscal and the rest of them worry about that. But I just wanted to spit that out as a caveat. The other thing that bothers me still is that, you know, the pressure on all of this has to be made on the federal government. Because as long as these people say it is, in fact, illegal, we're going to walk around with, with this thought process of it's okay in the state. But it is, but it's not. Because somebody else is looking over. We've seen the news in California. And that's ridiculous. When people actually get a license, and all of a sudden the busting goes down. Because it's against the law. So I don't want to you know, establish a false hope with any kind of a bill. You know, am I, I understand, I'm sorry, Representative Wadden. I understood possibly what you said and I agreed with them. And the sad part of it is this is what happens when you have a right brain and a left brain. Is one is saying, no, 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 he's not right, and the other is saying, let it go. And so I'm in absolute conflict and I, I cannot vote for this in good conscience, only because I'm looking beyond right now. That's my I think a, a serious challenge to the federal government in, in California, if, if they're growing it in California and selling it in California and they're not exploiting it in other states, I don't see where the federal government is going to lay the standards. Article 1, Section 8 says to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states with Indian tracks. So then you, then you could be uh, your own I set. could open a casino. That's right. Oh, 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 we could put up checks. We could, we could, we could uh, make it a resolution to incentive for the federal government to choose to do so. Because there is laws out there. No, I think, honestly, I'm sorry. I think, honestly, this needs to go on the floor. I really believe that. Because we need, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to support it. But we have to kick up our heels. Right. Kick the dust up. Right. And because the pressure has got to be at a federal level, and I understand that, but unfortunately, I, I'm talking to the You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I think after yeah. all, there's so much mythology and fear surrounding this that we lose sight of I think what's essential that I try to stick to, which is pragmatic concerns. 
I have two concerns about this. One is that it is and remains illegal at the federal level. I think what Jean just said is the operating principle there. I think we should do what we think is best and deal with the federal government after that, or let them deal with us. On the pragmatic concerns, I have the one serious concern, and that is what will be, if you just look at the numbers, the net increase or decrease in use of marijuana by people under 21 who, uh, if they use it in excess, can be harmed by it. Um, when I raised this point in connection with the decriminalization bill, both the Representative Grazzo and Representative Tasker claimed that in places where it's been legalized, decriminalized, uh, uh, decriminalized the net increase has, uh, the net effect has been a decrease. Uh, and uh, lack of serious problems. I would like to know if anybody else can, can cite information on either side of that question. I'd like to address a couple of those issues. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, there are studies that routinely show that about 60% of high school students have tried marijuana. And even though this still makes it illegal for a youth to smoke it or have it, um, the fact is it is part of the culture, and the way it is right now is we've made, the current law has made 60% of the young people, and most adults, um, criminals. And I think it's time to move beyond that. The country of Portugal is the most famous example of where they decriminalized, I thought it was legalized, but they decriminalized all drugs. And the net effect of that has been that drug use remained about the same. However, drug abuse and drug-related crimes went down. And I think we can expect the same sort of effect here from legalizing marijuana or cannabis. Representative Fields. Yes, the, the only issue I have is I don't like drugs unless I prescribe. Everybody knows that. However, you're talking about wholesale retail also. And when you do the wholesale, some guy's going to go in and buy some, and they decide to buy it. They're going to go outside, and the guy's going to have a ton of it. They're going to go out, and they're going to sell it and make a lot of money. And they're going to sell it. And what happens is with a drug, and the thing that's sad for me is I'm getting calls from constituents. says, what's happening to the criminal justice community? And they all becoming drug addicts, and they want all this, in the guns. And I'm like, well, don't blame the whole committee. Maybe a few of us that want it, and maybe a few don't. So I said, you got to look at that. And so that's what I'm dealing with with some of the calls, okay? And, and that's fine. I'll deal with it. But on the same token, when you mix drugs with other drugs, you, maybe you're not harming the other person because you didn't do anything with them, but you're harming yourself. And eventually that's going to catch up with you. And it does. And after three tours of not and seeing some of the marijuana and the pot and the stuff these guys did, it was very sad to have them met back and taken out. I'll tell you, and we're in a war zone. And it was very sad when we needed help that sometimes guys were taken out of there. So I just want to leave that one, okay? Regardless of what you think or what we feel. I respect the other side, I just don't agree with you. So, I just don't agree with you, and that's where I stand, no. and you'll never convince me. No, no. What? No. This, this has to have a vote from this committee. Pardon? Not go out without any recommendations. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to just read something that may have something to do with this discussion. It says, after one year from the ratification of this article, the manufacture, sale, or transportation of intoxicating liquors within the importation thereof into or the exportation thereof from the United States and all territories subject to the jurisdiction thereof for beverage purposes is hereby prohibited. That worked really well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for then we had another amendment. That well, I'm really glad that you brought that up because I think this has been a tremendous disservice that we've let this problem get, get so out of hand 70 years into the hole. So 70 years into the hole in this marijuana prohibition. It depends how you reinterpret the Constitution. Let him finish, please. Let him finish, please. So this tremendous disservice because with alcohol prohibition, it lasted nine years, right? Which is about the same, same length of time as the Great Depression. Yeah. Afterwards, or when, when it came time to repeal it, people said, well, gee, remember when back then it was pretty good? You know, we get to go out, we get to drink. Well, now we're doing the same thing. It's just illegal now. 
well, gee, remember, why don't we go back to the days when we didn't have all the, all the violence involved with it? But now we can't do that because we haven't had that in place. And when you go back, it's going to be this big veil lifted, say, oh, wow, what have we been doing all these years? We've been wasting all this time, money, and effort trying to arrest people that aren't harming anybody. And if you want to harm yourself, go right ahead. To add to that, though, right after uh, the prohibition was repealed, that's when the drug laws came in. So they shifted from making illegal alcohol to selling illegal drugs. So again, we created another monster. Another business. Another business, yeah. But without paying taxes. Thank you, man. I, I am going to vote against this uh, the past, but I will remind everybody what you're talking about, Mark. Um, uh, Representative Warden mentioned Portugal. That's the federal Portugal, not the local people. Prohibition was federal. The repeal was federal. All of this has <coughs> happen on the federal level. We can't supersede them, they supersede us. And until it's addressed on that level, I think that this is, we're just spinning our wheels. And it sends a very wrong message. I think the states are, are the incubators of the federal laws. <laughs> That's why they let California go as long as they did to see how it would work and what other states did it and so, several other states have done the same thing. Colorado's raising it medically. It's not working now. Yeah. Uh, it's so, yeah. And, and, that, and that's part of the problem. We have, had, we have passed uh, a medical marijuana here at, at some point, I think a few years back. I sat on the conference committee with the Senate in the House. And I was surprised that their big concern over that bill was the quality of the marijuana that they're going to sell as, as a medicine. I said, for crying out loud, what the hell are we doing here? they got people who are, there's no other medicine out there that can help the, the people you know, with, with the side effects of the medicines that they're taking. What difference does it make with the quality? That was the quality control piece they wanted. Yeah, that was crazy. Because then they had to determine where they're going to get it, and they they get it from Rhode Island. The first thing that Pamela Marcus goes first. Okay, she's been patient. First off, I'd like to re agree with Representative Kyle. This is not at the, fed the federal level. But everybody says if somebody wants to do this, and it's their problem. Well, I need to remind all of you that it then becomes our problem when we have to take care of them because they're down and out and they don't have any place to go. We pay for their medical bills. We pay for everything else. And all of you have sat here and said that marijuana is not habit farming, but it is habit farming. Yes? That's oh. Thank you. I'd like to make two comments. Uh, one is I'll remind everybody that I think we unanimously agree that liquor, alcohol, is far more harmful to individual health and public health than cannabis. And secondly, in regards to the federal issue, sure the feds have outlawed it, but all of our neighboring states have decriminalized marijuana. In Massachusetts, you can have up to an ounce. It's just a violation. It's a fine. I think medical marijuana is completely legalized in a next door in Vermont. I'm sorry, in Maine. So they're not worried about the feds. California, Washington, Oregon, these other states have decriminalized marijuana. Eventually, if we have enough states doing it, the, the feds are going to back off. And in fact, any time, at any time, a president could tell his uh, executive department not to enforce the laws. And I think Obama's done that to some extent. Uh, I don't think we need to concern ourselves with what they're doing in Washington. Washington's out of control. We have no way to limit what they're going to do. All we can do is take care of our constituents here in the Granite State and live free or die state. You could have shipped them the whole bill of marijuana. Maybe it would help them out. Yeah, it'd be better off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sharon, the representative for Ruby. I have to, I have to tell you, let you in on the story. Uh-oh. Being the elder, listen to me. I'm listening to you. True story. If you remember correctly, I was having a hell of a time with my eyesight. Going through some serious surgeries and things of that nature. And I was absolutely amazed at the people who came to me who cared and said they could help me out when I need. Now, I looked at it as an incredible gesture of care. 
because somehow it is related to glaucoma and can be used to keep the pressure. Because right now I have an implant of some kind of a hose. I can't tell you where the hell the damn thing comes out of. And it's going somewhere. But that was one procedure. But I'm going to tell you right now, if it came to me making a decision between my sight and doing something illegal, guess. Okay? But I'm just saying, it is out there, and the people who came to me, I love dearly. Only because they care. And to come to me, 30 years in law enforcement, to say, I can help you. Just remember that. I'm having a problem with this bill only because it's it's technicality. And I feel guilty with that. But I just have to give you my story, which is a true story. It's out there, it was readily available, and it was not being it wasn't some sweet bag in a car or something like that. It was none of that. It was none of that. First of all, democracy is the state. Representative Ruby. Yes, uh, I think we've been discussing this uh, quite a bit here. <laughs> but uh, again, there's all kinds of excuses of being made and of uh, being called G. I'm beginning to think, sitting here, that God, marijuana can almost cure anything we got. I mean, you know, if it's such a good drug, I mean, I can't believe that all of our elected officials in Washington, which uh, are not supporting this type of legislation, you know, it really puzzles me. You know, what are we doing? I mean, gee, they can't be all that bad up in Washington, are they? All these yeah. senators, all, 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 all the party. So you're, you're actually saying that you're against your own party, which is a majority in Washington, in the House. So, you know, let's be realistic here. Maybe we, they've got something, you know, that they know more than we do. And I mean, you know, we're talking here with these statistics, and we're only hearing from one side, not both sides. And somebody says, so their personal use? Hey, there's a lot of things that may be for my personal use, but you still, you know, it doesn't mean that you change laws for those reasons. You know, I've heard all kinds of good stories. This has been in front of our committee for how many years now? Yeah, how many years? And every time it's been voted, it has come up in front of our committee. It definitely has. It was voted down. It's true. It's been many years. And I, and, and, Three years ago, we had it with the tax attached to it. We killed it. And, and, and may I finish what I am saying is that I have not heard anybody from the public since I've been elected telling me that we did the wrong thing by voting it down. Not only that, I had phone calls this week telling me don't vote for that marijuana bill. So I'm just throwing this out here. Thank you. Okay, Representative Sharon has a comment. I just have a quick comment. The fact that if everybody in, I don't care what party is in Washington, cared about us, we would not be in the problems that we have today. Oh, here, here. Okay, Representative right. Jasker, then Okay, and then you. Page 9, page 9, line 35, there is a severability clause in here. Okay. Page 9, line 35, section 6 there, the severability clause. <laughs> if any provision of this act or application thereof to any person, thing, or circumstances held invalid, such invalidity, in, invalidity shall not affect the provisions or application of this act, which can be given effect without invalid provisions or application. And to this end, the provisions of this act are declared to be severable. So bottom line, if anything doesn't work at the federal level, we we put something on the table that will work. It will continue to, to affect public policy. It will allow anyone over 21 to possess up to an ounce of marijuana, and it will provide penalties if you provide marijuana to a, to a, to a minor. Kyle, you're looking at I know, but... You don't have to convince me. I'm trying to talk about the crime. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry, and I apologize for being late. I didn't know we were starting now. I didn't pay attention to that uh, on the schedule. Um, I look at this in terms of what happened with alcohol prohibition. I don't know if you've all had that discussion yet. Because they voted for you, as a matter of fact. They already did. In your honor. They quoted you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't currently see people selling alcohol on the corner. I don't see them making bathtub gin. I don't see criminals making money off of alcohol anymore. And that's the same thing we had with this. When they transferred from alcohol prohibition, they moved to this prohibition. And to speak to Representative Ruby's concerns, the reason the federal government hasn't decided to deal with this is because it's a huge portion of their budget. It's billions of dollars annually to law enforcement, drug enforcement, 
All you have to do is look at what's happening on the border with Mexico. The worst people in the world are getting rich off of this, and they're slaughtering people in towns by droves in order to be able to bring it to the United States where people want it. We should be taxing it, we should be regulating it, and controlling it, taking it away from the criminal element, using the money for social, for social um, programs to deal with anybody that might have an addiction problem or any, any, of, those, any of those other societal ills. This money would come to the federal government, to the state governments, and they would take it out of the hands of the worst people and regulate it so that the criminal element didn't have a funding source. That's, that's how I see it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, as you know, a lot of people on this committee know, I voted in the past for decriminalization of our marijuana laws for a quarter of an ounce or less. And if that was a little bit more of us now, I would vote for it. Uh, first of all, I have tremendous concern with the amount of one ounce. I just think that is too much. And I think uh, my friend, Representative Sharon, Representative Parsons, uh, raised good points. Uh, it is illegal under the federal law. And I've raised that issue when we brought up different gun bills. We were setting people up for failure. It's still a crime under the federal law, and they're going to prosecute people. And people are going to be under this assumption that it's legal now to have these drugs, when in fact it isn't legal, and you're going to find yourself in federal court. Uh, and lastly, on page 12 of the fiscal report, it says uh, the Department of Revenue Administration states that uh, it could not administer this bill without significant cost. And I can just see us, the Department of Revenue Administration, expend all kinds of funds, especially in these tough economic times, to set up a program of collection of yields, licensing, etc., and then to have the bill either found unconstitutional or find out that we're in conflict with federal law. And that money's gone, so I'll be voting against the, uh, the motion. I just wanted to add that for those that think that alcohol is not a problem out there and that people aren't getting it, <laughs> I know adults and some older people over 21 that go out and buy it for the young kids, sneak it in the back of the <laughs> side of the store and stick it in their car and they get drunk and they've seen something on the road get killed. So, I, you know, we can sit here and be blind, we can think about all these other things, but, but you know, you've got to really think of what we're really doing here. And, and, you know, I'm looking at the side of, when we walk out this door today, how many people were here thinking of this committee? And, and, you know, I served in the House for 13 terms. I, I had the pride in it, and all I was with. But I just think that it's wrong. What's going on? As people are listening to the people out there. I haven't had one call to support it. I haven't had one call to support this bill, except everything to say, what are you doing down here? Don't you have better things to do? And, and Representative Shepard brought up some good points about, about the cost and the things that the minister was going to say on the retail. I, I think there's some problems here before you even start about the right way. He's right. Yeah, that's that's right. Well. Yes, I got a call one time, uh, this was probably six or eight years ago, from a woman who lived in Massachusetts who was running a little bit of a And the bedroom door was yeah, open a little bit, and she was going to bed, and, and she saw the scales and the plastic bags and, and the marijuana. So she called me and asked me what, what she could do about it. And I said, well, she's afraid she's going to lose her house because of the federal laws, taking the property and so forth. I told her to call the narcotics guy in, uh, in the local police department. He called down there. He's on vacation. And they had no one else to talk to her. Wow. So she called me back and I said, well, I said, what do you want to do? She said, well, he's put it in, in the, he had an unregistered car in the, in the yard and he was locking it in the trunk of the car. So she grabbed his keys when I was sleeping took the stuff out of the trunk, put it in her car, and she says, I'm coming down to your house. So he arrived at 3 o'clock in the morning, slept on the couch, and the next morning I called the chief of police. She had a plastic bag about the size of a pillow. It weighed a pound. That's what was on the receipt that I got from the chief. And I, I called him up the first thing in the morning, I took it over there, and I I said, I've got something for you, but I want a receipt for it. He said, okay. So I <laughs> handed him this plastic bag full of marijuana. And it, he was amazed. Well, later on, of course, the guy threatened to burn the house down. And it was a real fiasco. But the fact is, he did that because of the, the 
wouldn't be able to lose it at all. Well, she wasn't an ill man, but she, it's possible that she could have lost her own. Got under some characters that had stolen mouse. Well, this is, this is so crazy. You're right. And, uh, you know, my, my whole feeling is, uh, I, I know I've inhaled it because I've been to a rock concert. <laughs> but I've never purposely done it. I don't, I, I, I just see these, these scumbags getting rich, as you talk about, over something that was made illegal. You can get and there's no proof of it any free. time. And use it. I don't use it. I, my, my kids have, I know they have, because I found some and I've got some up in the, in the ceiling in the house. <laughs> Yeah, you had it's crazy. I do believe well, exactly. that the states are the crucible of democracy. The federal government does not lead us. We lead the federal government. We joined the federal government. They didn't join us. I just think that, well, I'm going to vote to get this out. You sound like the nature of the rest of I'm not advocating it. They get any other way than that, but to get that discussion started. And I think if enough states did that, the federal government would back up. That's my feeling. Yeah. They don't have enough troops to take care of. Thank you. At the end of the day, the only people really benefiting from the prohibition, possibly the prisons, you know, you have more people pulling in there, and also the people growing it, distributing it, selling it illegally, not fat, untouched by, by you know, clean hands. And so, while putting these people out of business, we're doing a justice to all the people who are being prosecuted for this. Really, who are they going after? Who do they want to stop? They want to stop the people distributing this. They want to stop the people growing it. This, the only way to do that at this point, because we've let the problem get so far out of hand, is to do it themselves. And obviously, we can't have the state grow the marijuana because that would be violation of federal law. So we're licensing people to sell it. How they get it is one of our concerns. Representative Ginsburg and then Representative Rowley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it took nine years to get rid of alcohol prohibition. It started in the states. It started actually in some cities. Um, and it has to start somewhere. I think, uh, I, I think that if I vote for this and if, if enough of my colleagues have joined me that this is a uh, recommended OTP, I don't think we're going to have a chain of uh, wholesalers and, and retailers in every corner uh, yeah. within a year or, or even within five years. But I think we are going to start a discussion. And I think we need to take a stand. And I think at this point, I'd like to take a stand for us to treat this in a logical, rational, sensible way, <laughs> devoid of all the mythology that's grown up around it, all the bureaucracy that's grown up against it and all the beliefs that support all of that and treat it in a sensible way. So I think now I am going to vote. Uh, and Okay, the, uh, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, I haven't, how many people here actually has had phone calls from the public the saying that you are, because I know even with the right to work law, we look in the state, you had all kinds of people standing out there. I haven't seen anybody out here petitioning us in any way whatsoever on this issue. And it's been brought out on the process, brought on Manchester Union, it's been on all the papers. I haven't seen anybody holding signs here or anything. They'll probably be arrested. So, I mean, who are we representing ourselves? Are we representing our constituents that's out there? Is there statistics in this state that people want to legalize marijuana? No. I don't think so. I know where you people are getting your statistics. I don't think so. And again, thank you, Madam Chair. I would take issue, and I, I am going to vote against the bill, but I would take issue with Representative Barubi, and there were a number of people that sat at that table and were for it, citizens and others. So that I do take issue with. If I, if I may reply to that, is that uh, under prohibition, you had hundreds of people standing out there and fighting it. We have hundreds and we had under control. We keep using oh, liquor. Right. Okay. 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 We can oh, no, we keep talking water. about liquor, but that's all right. You tell me one bad, that's let's, the other. Let's, let's, let's get on with it. Okay, Representative <laughs> Well, see how it 
tunes out with the public. I sort of touched on this the other day when we talked about the war on drugs and uh, President Nixon and his zeal to <coughs> the hippies. Uh, I should have studied it, and I, I shared that with uh, Representative Ginsburg. Uh, it was called the Schaefer Commission study. Their conclusion was that prohibition on this was more harmful than the actual use itself. So we, this is a great disservice to society to waste all of our police resources. We spend billions of dollars every year on this. This is ridiculous. We should be spending that on other things. We shouldn't be wasting our time on it. We should go with the study of the president that started this war that says we shouldn't have it in the first place because it's going to cause more harm than good, and that's what it's done. So I'm going to be voting yeah. for the OTP. Did you know, one more, one more point. Okay. Uh, Did you know that when the police stop you and you get that one ounce of marijuana, that's not the only thing that's probably in your car. You probably have cocaine, whatever else. And that's what oh, no, triggers something. That's, 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 that's speculation. They don't just go looking for that one thing. Because when you get stopped, they find many things in there. And right now, as far as Maine is concerned, they just did a big arrest on marijuana. If, if that were true, it would be because the person got used to dealing with drug dealers instead mm. of dealing with storefront operators. And that's what's going to happen with marijuana when it gets out of hand. It's going to be more. Yeah. 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 I forgot the story I told about the DWI checkpoint. Yeah. Yeah. The fellow came in to the gate with a light <laughs> They pulled him over and they stretched him to the back of yeah, the person. He had that one rope. They threw it down the strong drain and let him go. Okay. So like the that is one of the reasons. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Eight. 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 Eight.